morning, Dirty Church. Good to be with you another blessed Sunday morning. Good to have everybody joining us, and we thank you for being with us, and, and hopefully you're able to get on live and be able to see you, uh, see us as we go through it live. That way you can see our mistakes, and I can't cut them out. So, But we're glad you're with us today, and just excited of what the Lord's wanting to do, and what He is doing, and and we see things that, that, that God's moving in a lot of different ways, and a lot of different uh atmospheres around the world and and he's using this time as we're in lockdown to do a lot of different things i want to encourage you as parents uh to uh, download the journey church kids stuff if you've not already done that and hopefully you've got some stuff to to teach your kids at home you know a lot of times we want to depend on the church to spend an hour or so with our kids on sundays and and that fixes it all but you need to spend time and let the let your children know that the word of the lord is important in your life and it trains them and lets them know and they get excited about what God wants to do in their own life even as kids and and we need to know that God touches kids lives it's not something you know I heard down through the years well when you get to a certain age or this that or the other well I know God's blown that completely out of the water because I've seen little kids uh, more full of God than a lot of adults so we need to train our children the Bible says and and do that now while they're little and do that now let them know about god and know about the word of god as we get into it the, the message today we're still continuing with the the counterpunch and looking at different battles that were uh fought uh, throughout the bible and and we may go another week or so with this uh, particular thing but but just think about whatever uh, what we talked about last week is we need to let god fight our battles it's not ours to fight but it's his and we need to give him the glory deserving of him. And we need to think we need to think about that. And let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get started here today and be a little bit different than what we've what we've done in the past, but just kind of hang with us and, and and listen to what God's got to tell us today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, again today. Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to come into your house. Lord, through live stream. And Lord, we're not just coming into your house, we're coming into individuals' homes. And Father, we pray that those homes, we pray for a hedge of protection around them. And Father, that you just touch them in a mighty way, Lord. And as they teach their children, Lord, and, and Father, they listen for themselves, Lord, and what you have for them, that they would teach their children to trust you and they would trust you with their lives. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to realize no matter what kind of battle we're going through, the battle is yours and you're going to see us through it. Lord, this coronavirus, Lord, is a battle. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're in the midst, Lord, that you're taking care of this, Lord, and you're going to take care of what's going on here. And Father, I pray for the businesses, Lord, people that are not able to work. I pray that for a special blessing upon them financially, Lord, that they're going to come out of this stronger than they've ever been. Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that when they return to work, Lord, that you're going to miraculously touch their yes. finances and that you're going to help yes, them to move Lord. forward in you. Yes. And God, we're going to know that it's you and we're going to give you praise yes, and Lord. glory and honor for it all. And Father, we give you thanks today that if there was one person here today that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that you would touch their life and touch their hearts, that they could see that they need you in their life today. Father, we pray for our leaders of our country. We pray for their uh, direction and their yes. guidance, Lord, that you touch them and move in their hearts and lives, Lord, to know exactly what needs to take place and what needs to be done. And we give you praise for it all because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, if you're with us, we were with us last week, and we talked about <coughs> the art of counterpunching and reading the, the throughout the the article and talked about the different counterpunching um, scenarios and and the one in particular about how effective it is in a boxing match, and that's why we kind of the Lord placed just the word counterpunch, you know, in, in my spirit as I start studying and, and learning about this a little bit. We discussed a story from CommandoBoxing.com called the art of counterpunching all right counterpunching there were some things that we'll highlight again counterpunching ensures that the fight stays in your corner and every fight has a corner man and a christian we talk about it our corner man is the holy spirit and we need to listen to him because he knows what's coming and he'll guide us and he'll direct us in our uh, in our daily walk but today let's look at how god used counterpunching or punching in general to let himself be known uh, to not only his chosen people, Israel, but to the captives, uh, their captives and their enemies. All right? Just like the fight between muscles and the chubby uh, boxing coach, don't let your opponents 
size and strength determine the outcome of your fight because it it don't always happen and and I, I remember one time and this is a kind of a sideline story there's a drag race over here at Bristol and and we were seeing the, across the track and seeing these stands and these two guys gets in a fight and this big chubby guy starts fighting with this little skinny guy and they're over there and they're going at it with a chubby guy he ends up on his back and he looks like a bug on his back and his legs and his arms is kicking and he's doing this thing and the little guy just beating the tar out of it. So size don't always matter and it definitely doesn't matter to God. All right, this could have happened to a guy I'm going to call One Punch David against his opponent Goliath. And it happened in today's boxing match, like today's boxing world, we might have heard it this way. And you think about an announcer and I'm no, I'm no broadcast announcer, but you just think about it this way. You can hear the announcer say, this fight has been anticipated for 40 days, and folks, we're getting ready to get this fight started. Take your seat, get your popcorn, get everything ready. We're getting ready to start this fight. There's a great crowd here for the fight here in the Valley of Elah. And you have the Philistine army on the one side of the valley pulling for their champion, Goliath. On the other side of the valley pulling for their little known champion, no pun intended, David, which was just a young guy. On this side of the valley, wearing a bronze helmet and a coat of mail weighing 125 pounds, he has bronze leg armor and carries a bronze javelin on his shoulder with the tip of his spear weighing 15 pounds. He comes in standing at 9 foot and 9 inches tall, the Philistine champion, Goliath. And you listen to the crowd on the Philistine side, and they're roaring and they're cheering for their champion, and, and uh, you can just hear it all up and down the valley. On the other side of the valley is a champion, David. He's dressed in what appears to be shepherd clothing, a staff, and only a sling and a few stones in his pouch. Now, he is in a, he's a newcomer to this arena, and let's hear it for David. And well, the folks in the crowd on David's side of Israel is a little less than enthusiastic today. Nothing like the Philistine army, and it's almost like they're looking for an exit and a way to get out of here. But... Let's look at David. His only documented wins are with a lion and a bear. He is actually a young boy, and I'm not sure how he thinks he can go head to head with a guy like the Goliath. And maybe head to knee. Look at their sizes. But I hear Goliath calling the young David. Here's what he says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, in verse 43, if you have your Bible, it says, So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the, the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Verse 44 said, And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. The announcer says, I didn't seem to scare David at all. Being a little guy looking here at Goliath, it didn't seem to scare him. In fact, here comes David. Well, he has some words of his own for Goliath. In verse 45, it says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. He's coming to him with a whole different armor. All right, verse 46, David continues on. He said, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you, and I will take your head from you. Well, David don't even have a sword. How's he going to take his head? It says, and this day I will give the carcasses of the, not just you, but the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. All right, verse 47. Then all the assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands, or into our hands. All right, we're getting ready, and the fight's anticipated. The crowd is, is roaring, and the bell rings to start the fight, and we're getting going here now. Verse 48, so it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David didn't run away, but David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Verse 49 says, Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in the forehead. Folks, the crowd's going wild. We don't know what to do. So that the stone sank into the, his forehead, 
and he fell on his face to the earth. <clears throat> the announcers say, folks, this is one for the record books. One punch, David takes out the champion Goliath only seconds into the match. This is something that we're going we're to hear about for centuries down the road. All right, in verse 50 in 1 Samuel chapter 17 says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in, David, in the hand of David. All right, verse 51 says, Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they hit the exits. They fled, the Bible says. They took off running. But if you read the rest of the story, the army of Israel took out Akram and destroyed them all. All right, folks, you've seen it here today. This announcer is continuing. The unheard of young man, David, now champion. Who knows? One day he may be king. You never know what God's got in store. And we want to leave our listening audiences with this. As the Lord told Abraham, is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> All right. Let's look at another great, great fighter in the Bible. You know, as, as most of those boxing matches, you have different stages. You have the, uh, the lightweights and the welterweights and the middleweights and the heavyweights. But let's look at another great fighter, and his name was Joshua. And Joshua was a great battle man. Joshua trained under Moses and became a great fighter in his own right. And he, he took on whoever God sent him to take on. And he didn't, he didn't shy away. But the Bible actually lists all the fights Joshua won. And, and according to Joshua chapter 20, 12, verse 24, there were 31 fights that he won just on that side of the Jordan where the city that we're going to talk about today was located, Jericho. All right. One of the most famous fights Joshua had the one in today's time would have made all the ESPN headlines was in a city called Jericho because it was not fought the way you would normally fight. God, sh God chose, as Joshua's coach, he had a two-punch strategy to defeat Jericho. The two punches were faith and worship. If one don't get them, the other will. All right, if you read the story, Joshua did his pre-fight pre planning, just like you would a normal boxer would do and, and his team would do, and he sent spies out into the city to check out the city and check it out and see what was going to happen. However, Joshua knew if he went up against Jericho alone, he would lose because this was not his battle. All right, This was not man's battle at all. This would be God's victory, not man's. That's where we're going today. All right, Joshua knew that Israel's duty in the battle was nothing more than to worship and trust God. That's all they had to do, and God said, I'll take care of the rest of it. God did not set this fight up to be a conventional fight. The battle you're fighting today, right now, or will fight in the future, may not be fought in a conventional way. It may not be what you think it's going to be. It may be something that you let God take care of and God gets the glory out of whatever battle you're having to fight. But just like Jericho, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. All right, here's what God told Joshua in chapter 6. If we look at it, if you got your Bible, turn to Joshua chapter 6. All right, 6 and verse 1 says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. So they got the place locked down because they knew that Israel was out there and they were coming toward them. So they had everything locked down tight. All right. Joshua in 6.2 says, And the Lord said to Joshua, the first thing he says with an exclamation point in my Bible, says, See. Well, what's God telling him here? See. Sometimes God wants us to see things in faith before we ever receive it. We have to believe God and see it through faith before we ever actually have it. All right? <clears throat> and then he goes on to say, I have given Jericho into your hand. He's telling Joshua, it's kings and it's mighty men of valor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, not that this victory is Joshua's or Israel's victory. God said, but God said, I have given it into your hand, but it's still God's victory. And verse 3 says, you shall march around the city. Now, this is the unconventional way, and you've probably heard this story. But you shall march around the city, and all your men of war, you shall go all around the city once, 
And this you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city of Jericho, or the city, will, listen to this, not fall in a big pile of rubble, not fall till you can't get over it, but it's going to fall down flat. And I looked up some pictures of the city of Jericho, and it showed actually having two walls and a, and a slope in between the two walls. And some of the things I read said the wall just fell over, and they fell and matched, so it was perfect for the children of Israel to cross over into Jericho and take the city. But then the people shall go up, every man straight before him. And as you would expect from God, that is exactly what happened. The wall fell flat. If you go on and read the story, and they took the city. This took an extreme amount of faith and trust from Joshua and all of Israel. They were used to going head to head, fighting battles, and taking you know taking this and that. Even though God was with them and God was instructing them, but this was a completely different, unconventional way to take a city. But God got the glory. Just like Joshua, we learned to trust God not through the easy fights but through the hard ones. But the main thing is, trust God. Trust Him. Put your trust in Him. Give it to Him. And, and, and just say, God, I, I'm just going to lay it all down at you, and I'm going to trust you to take care of this for me, and let Him handle it. We may not see exactly how it's going to get done. We may It may be, like I said again, in an unconventional way. But God will take care of it. We have to trust Him. All right, the Lord told Joshua in chapter 13, verse 31, or verse 1, excuse me, he told, told Joshua something else. And I thought this was kind of a little bit different. But he said, you're old. I'm old. You know, I start looking in the mirror and I start looking, uh, you know, at the color of my hair and different things. I'm getting old. I'm 60 years old, heading pretty close to 61 here shortly. But you're old, advanced in years. And there remains very much land yet to be possessed. You know, and that's what God's telling us today. There's a lot of land yet to be possessed, no matter what your age. But I want to encourage you for just a moment. You may be say, well, I'm too old, or I'm up in years. I, uh, you may be at the point in your life you say, I'm too old for God to use me anymore. Put that aside. We can't hide our age, and we can't change our age. That's something we can't do. We can, we can color our hair, and we can have facelifts, and we can do all these kind of things, but it still does not change our age. And like other things... It is what it is. We can't change it. We can't make up our mind. We say, well, they got, a, they got a mind like a teenager. That still don't make you a teenager. All right, you are what you are. But just like God told Joshua, there remains very much land yet to be possessed, even right here today. There are cities that are yet to be possessed. And in every city, there are people, and people need the Lord. People need the Lord. If you're not saved today, you need the Lord. You need Him in your life. But you're not too old, and God will give you the strength in your old age. Now, I want to listen to the scripture in Psalm chapter 92, starting in verse 12. It says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you say I'm done for. Don't you say it's all over with. But you shall bear fruit in old age. And they shall be uh, fresh and flourishing. Not some rotten fruit, but it's going to be fresh and flourishing. Verse 15. To declare, and this is why that you're going to be fresh, fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. I believe that is a word for somebody today. Somebody that's listening, <coughs> excuse me, somebody that's out there, and you, th you feel like, well, I don't know all about this new technology. I don't know all these things, and I don't know how to do this and how to do that. I can't have church 
at my church, and I, you know I'm getting too old to deal with all this kind of stuff. You're not too old. God told us you wasn't too old, but you're going to flourish. You need to turn it over to the Lord. And I told you several weeks ago, find a teenager. They can help you do this, but you still need to be preaching the Word of God. You still need to be doing the things of God. You may be able to teach kids on uh, using your phone or some other kid's phone. Do what God's called you to do. It's in there, and it's shut up in your bones. You need to let it out, and you need to let God use you in the way that he can use you here today. And you need to be a part of what God's doing here today. You're not too old, and you're not done, and keep up the good work of the Lord. Just like David your opponent may be gigantic, just like Joshua. It may seem like a, an immovable wall, but just as it, it was, was with them, the battle's not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Trust Him. Give it to Him. Let Him have it. Trust Him with your life. And like we ended last week with the words of Coach Aaron from Commando Boxing, control your fear. God did not give you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Control your panic. God's in control. There's nothing to panic about. All right? And you will prevail if you put your trust in the God of Israel, the God that created this universe, the God that created you, the God that sent his only son to die on a cross that you could be saved. You will prevail. You will prevail. If you're with us today, you say, man, I'm, having a, I'm going through a battle. I'm having a tough time. You, know, you just don't know what's going on in my life. I'm having to fight this battle, and I feel like I'm fighting it alone. Well, I'm telling you, God's with you. You may not feel it. God didn't tell us we'd always feel him. He said to trust him and trust his word. His word is what's powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. We need to trust him and believe in his word. That's what God wants us to do. And we may not always feel over-spiritual. And the Bible don't say you'll feel it, but he said according to his word is what we need to trust. We need to trust him and trust him that he's done it before and he'll do it again. And God is not a God that, that his hand is short or his arm is shortened and he can't say. He can still touch you. He can still move in your life with healing power. He can still move in your life for salvation. You, you're not too mean. You're not too bad. You're not too good to be saved. God wants to touch you and change your life today. Will you let him? Will you put your full trust in him? And as we do every, every service, I'm going to pray a prayer for you, and I'm going to ask you again to pray with me. All right? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, today, again, for this opportunity <coughs> to come before you. And Father, we pray, Lord, for these people that are listening, Lord, that may be going through a battle in their life. And Father, it's hard sometimes to not try to do it on our own, Lord, but and give it all to you. But I pray, Lord, right now that you're giving this battle to them, Lord, uh, to, that they're giving the battle to you, Lord. And, Father, I pray that you give them strength to give it to you. And, Father, as they pray and they seek you, that they turn it over to you. Father, I don't know what's going on in people's lives, but you do. Father, it could be a healing that needs to take place in their life. Father, it could be a family situation. It could be uh, bearing on divorce or whatever the case may be, Lord, but they need you to touch them. It could be a situation, Lord, in a home that's completely dysfunctional, Lord, but I know that you can provide function and you can provide order to that home. Father, it may be a situation, Lord, again, it could be drugs or alcohol. It could be different things like that, Lord, that people need control over. And, Father, that control comes through you. And, Father, I pray for them right now for that strength that they need to be an overcomer and to overcome these situations, Lord, and to give the battle to you, Lord, and let you help them through this situation. Father, it may be unemployment, Lord, right now with this coronavirus and all these things that's going on, and it may be a financial struggle. But, Lord, they're going to give it to you. They're still going to trust you with their finances, and they're going to put their full trust in you that you're going to take care of them. And just like David said, he'd never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. Father, I thank you that you're touching them right now. And, Father, we pray, Lord, for each family that's listening, Lord, that their children are being brought up, Lord, in the fear of the Lord. And they're going to learn these things that, that God, that they can put their trust in God, that they can put their trust, whole trust in Him, and their faith can come forward even as a young child. And, Father, we thank you for it. 
And Father, if there's one person, yes. person listening, Lord, today in the sound of our voice, Lord, that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that you would speak to them, Lord, today, that they could see that they need you today, Lord, because this is the hour and this is the moment of salvation. And, Father, it's open to them right now, and you're speaking to their heart. Father, I thank you for it right now as we pray with them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's pray and you repeat with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For saving me. For saving me. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died on the cross. And you rose again the third day. And that you rose again on the third day. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I'm going to walk for you. I'm going to walk for you. And I'm going to put my full trust in you. And I'm going to put my full trust in you. And I thank you again. And I thank you again. For saving me. For saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you need you need us to pray with you. Just send us a note there on Facebook or wherever you're listening, and we'd be more than glad to do that. And put your trust in the Lord. Let Him have it all. Let Him have your life. Put it all in His hands. You've made a mess out of it. Let God have it. Let God have it, and He can take care of it. And he can put you on the right track and put you going in the right direction. The battle's not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. Thank you for being with us again today. Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day to share with your family and, and watch us on Facebook Live or wherever you may be watching. And just let the Spirit of God come into your home and touch your lives. And we thank you again for it. Have a good day.